There are five reasons why I will turn down and opt out of working with a client or a couple. And I'll tell you this, not always is that reason money. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. My name is Andrea Eppolito. I am a Las Vegas-based wedding planner and lifestyle expert, and we come together here on this channel to celebrate life, luxury, and above all else, love. So if you are a couple that is engaged, if you are a wedding pro, if you are a creative entrepreneur, welcome, thank you for coming. I love having you here, and today, more than ever, I am overwhelmingly grateful. We on this channel have hit 5,000 subscribers. It is a huge milestone. I can't tell you what it means to me. And I really wanna make sure that this video specifically really meant something to those of you who join me and who share your day and your life with me and who are watching. So today I wanna to talk about the fact that I say no to about 98% of the inquiries that come in to Andrea Eppolito events. Now, this is not new. This is not a marketing ploy, and it is not something where I've I've outgrown or gotten too big for my britches. From the very beginning, when I opened my business in 2011, I made a statement on my website that I was only going to work with a handful of clients. This was because I wanted to be all in. I wanted to give my clients an extraordinary experience. I wanted them to have absolute access to me. I never wanted to manage a team of planners. I wanted to work with couples who cared about the things that I care about. And so, yes, the very obvious reason that a lot of times I will say to somebody when they call, um, I'm so sorry, I am not your planner, is because somebody will send me an inquiry or a lead and they'll say, this is my budget. And I will know fairly quickly whether or not that budget is something that is realistic in terms of what it is that I do. If you've been here with me for a long time, you know that my weddings all have six figure budgets and it's because that is the amount of money that it takes to produce the work that I love doing. And it's not a judgment on a couple. It's not even an indictment on whether or not they can afford the wedding. More often than not, these people that are calling me absolutely can afford it, but they've made a decision that this is what they want to invest, and that's not work that I do. So yes, is budget a reason that I will say, no, we're not a good fit? Of course it is. But truly at the core, there are five reasons that I will say no to a client, and I wanna go through them with you now, because if you haven't set up these standards in your business, the work you say no to is just as important, if not more important, than the work that you take on, the work that you accept into your business, and the art that you put into the world, the work that you are proud to claim as your own. So the first reason that I will say to a client, I'm so sorry I'm not your planner, is if I can't make an emotional connection. Our first consultation is very much like a first date, and you want it to be exciting. You want to have energy. You want to have this, this kind of conversation back and forth. More often than not, my first couple of calls with my clients, we don't even really discuss the wedding. I want to know who you are. I want to get a feeling. I want to hear about your relationship. I want to see, do we like each other? Do we trust each other? Do we communicate easily? Do we have the same sense of humor? Because if we don't, if there's a lot of like, I don't know, I'm not sure. If there's that dead air, that tells me that we are not a good fit. That's not how I like to work. I want people to see my name on the phone and I want them to be excited to pick up. I don't want anyone to dread me and I certainly don't want anyone that feels lukewarm. I don't wanna have to pull things out. So if we're in a place and I don't feel as if we have a really great emotional connection, then I will say to somebody, I am so sorry, I'm not the right fit for you, and I think that you should move in another direction. The second reason that I will tell somebody, 
I'm so sorry, I'm not your planner, is if this client comes to me with what I consider to be an unreasonable expectation. Now, this in so many ways does relate to budget. I had a phone call and a bride called and she said, hey, I'm getting married, I have $200,000, that's a lot of money to spend in a wedding, this is what I'm looking for, this is what I want, and it has to be three days worth of events. Now, I looked at it and I knew that what she wanted was not something that I could do for her at that price point based on the type of florals that she wanted, based on the venue she was talking about, based on the entertainment. I knew that when we took the $200,000 and we spread it out, we were not going to be able to accomplish what she wanted. And so my first step there was just basically educating her. Do you understand what things cost? Where did you get the number 200,000? It's very possible that she's been saving for this wedding for the last 10 years, and this is a finite number. It's also possible that she's just uninformed about what things cost. Maybe she needs a better understanding of flowers, lighting, food, transportation. And so we sat down and I tried to say, where did this number come from? What value do you place on these different things? And how can we accomplish this for you? And it became very, very clear that the number was static because it's the only amount of money that she felt comfortable spending. She also wanted things that I didn't believe I could possibly provide her with. And so the conversation was, can you have an extraordinary wedding, a beautiful wedding for this number of guests over these numbers of days? Yes, you can. Can you have an Andrea Eppolito wedding? Can I give you the kind of experience that I would that I believe you deserve? Can I produce that at $200,000? Can I give you the look and the feel? Can I give you the time and the attention? Can I take you to a place that I would like to see you go? And the answer for me was no. Now that doesn't mean that she can't get it, from another planner. It doesn't mean that she can't go someplace else and find it. And it certainly doesn't mean that she won't be able to do it. It just means that I'm not the person to do it for her. And with that, I would say the third reason that I will pass on a client, I, I would turn around and I would say, this client is not on brand. And my husband hates that saying. He says, don't say it's not on brand because it sounds like you're excluding people or it sounds like a judgment. And I, I get what he's saying and he's right because it's not so much about anything other than priorities. So when you look at my work, when you go to my website and you see the things I do, I have made it very clear that I want to bend the universe to my will. I've made it very clear that I want to be transformative with space. I want to use a lot of rentals. I want to bring in new floors and new ceilings. I want to cover the walls. I want to be really transformative with flowers and lighting. I'm a sensory planner. And so every time I approach a moment and a touch point, I turn around and I say, what is the guest going to hear? What are they going to see? What are they going to taste? I, I look at all of these things and those are the things that I care about. How can I take you on a journey by engaging your senses and then delivering you something with a really flawless service? And so if a client comes to me and they don't care about that, if a client comes to me and they have all the money in the world and they, they are at my price per person and they have a very clear and very good understanding, they have a realistic expectation and we have a vibe, but they all of a sudden drop and I'm really into ecotourism. And so I want to go and do this because I want to be able to be in nature. And I have this idea about, you know, conservation and doing all these things and having no waste. We do not align. I think those are beautiful and wonderful 
attributes. I think it's important to support the planet. I think that all of those things that that particular client wants have value. But that's not my lifestyle. That's not my specialty. That's not my brand. And so to take a client who wants something that is so outside of what it is that I specialize in really disrespects the client. It turns around and it makes it so transactional. It's, you have a lot of money and you like me and so I'm gonna take your money and I'm gonna do my best at something that I don't normally do. I'm gonna give it my best shot at something that just doesn't really matter to me. It's not my why. It's not the thing that pulls me into a space. Ultimately, working with a client whose priorities don't align with yours means you will never do your best work. And that ultimately will degrade your brand. And that is something that I've never been willing to do in terms of picking and choosing the you know five to seven couples and clients that I want to work with every year. The fourth reason that I will walk away from the table is really no reason at all. If, if I just get a gut feeling, if there's a voice in the back of my head saying, say no, I, I really and truly 100% believe that your gut knows things before you do, before your head does. I think that there is an intuition. I think that there's an energy. And I, I do think that there is something out there in the world that says, this is bad. It's like when you're walking down the street and you're about to turn a corner and you go, nope. Or you get into an elevator and you get a weird feeling. So many of us try to avoid that. We try to talk ourselves out of listening to that voice because we are afraid of what it says about us as people. I read a book, I think I've mentioned it before, it's called The Gift of Fear. I believe it's Gavin De Becker. I'm gonna link it in the notes. The entire book was about listening to your intuition, listening to that voice that says, this is a bad idea. And I have gotten calls or I have been at consultations where I'm, I'm looking at the couple and everything looks right, or I'm talking to them, they're saying all the right things, I'm saying them back, and I just, I don't understand why I feel reticent, why I feel like I need to have my guard up, why, where I feel like I can't just let go and throw myself into the process. I don't know why I don't have that feeling. It's not about branding. It's not about priorities. It's not about money. It's, it's very simply that there is something saying, don't do this work. And having been in hospitality for the last 400 years, um, really it's, it's in Vegas for, for the last 25 years, I have learned that that voice will never steer me wrong. I will be totally honest. I have watched those couples go and work with other planners. I've watched them have beautiful weddings. I've watched them do extraordinary things. For a second, I've been like, ah, oh, man, that could have been me. But that only lasts, literally, that is the blink of an eye. It is, it is the drama and the, the angst and the stuff that I would have had to live with for 18 months or nine months that, that makes me say to that pang, this was not for you. And I can let that go really easily. I've also had planners that have taken those weddings come to me and say, oh my God, what a nightmare. What a hot mess. And in those moments, I can turn around and say, whew, like glad I passed on that one. And so really my, my gut telling me that this is not a place for me to be is that is enough of a reason for me to say no. And the fifth reason that I say no, and this is the hardest, this is one that is, this is a struggle. Sometimes I get an ideal client at a not ideal time. And I have had spectacular 
beautiful, wonderful couples pay me the compliment of reaching out and saying to me, I have, I have this great budget. I have this beautiful vision. I love your work. I love you as, as a person on the planet. I love the way we communicate. I love everything is there. And it's, it's just energy and it's great communication and it's exciting and we're going back and forth. And you think to yourself, this is perfect. This feels like it's supposed to feel until they give me their wedding date. And I know, I know in here that I don't have the bandwidth to give them the experience that they want, that I am simply too busy. I limit my clients because you'll see lots of stuff behind me. Something you'll never see is a client folder. Do I take notes? Of course I take notes. Do I have a system? Of course I have a system. But that, that system is in place because it reinforces everything I have in here, all the stuff that lives in my head. Because when a bride getting married in September calls me, I don't ever wanna to have to pick up a book and say, oh wait, let me check my notes on that. No, your wedding, I care about your wedding as much as you do. Every single thing that you care about, all of your hopes, all of your fears, all of your priorities, everything that you need lives in my head. I take it on as my own. It's a, it's a really kind of symbiotic transfer. And we have to have, for me, and not every planner works like this, and it is 100% okay if you don't. But for me, we have to have this connection. We have to have this thing. Because 30 minutes before the doors open, when the world is backed into a corner, I have to be able to tap into that emotionally and mentally. And at a really visceral place, I need to know 100% who you are and that every decision I'm making is the right one for you. And so when I have a client that would be an ideal client, when I have somebody that I really want to do the work, but I know I can't give them my time. I know I can't give them my attention. I know that I don't have the space in my life to be wildly creative and present. I will say no. And it sucks. And those hurt. I'm not going to lie. That hurts me because all I want to do is make the world a more beautiful place. All I want to do is give people who live an extraordinary life, I want to give them an extraordinary experience. I really care about that. That kind of stuff matters. And so when I know that it's my own bandwidth, that it's my own limitations, that sucks to say no. That's a really difficult goodbye. And so I will try. I will say, is there any way whatsoever that you can move your wedding date? Not because I'm booked, but because I can't do the work at that time. I just, I'm not going to be as good as you deserve. And ultimately, that's what this is about. This is not about me. This is always about the client, even the client that I don't take. The, the art is mine. The expression is mine. The design is mine. That all comes through me, but it's not for me. The process is for me. The process is what I love. The process is what gets me going and gets me off and gets me engaged. But the outcome, the experience, that's for the client. That's for the couple. That's for their guests and for their grandmother and for their aunt. I can't and won't disrespect that just to say that I, I did it because that person deserves all of, of me. They deserve me at my best. And if I can't do it, then... Yeah, I, I do say no. And so obviously money is a reason if somebody comes and they don't have a budget, then yeah, I, that's, that's not so much me saying no, that's the client just not being a right fit. And I think that's okay. But these five reasons when I have somebody and it is, it's a maybe client, it's a really good potential, it's a this could be something good, these are the reasons that I say no, because I, I truly believe 
that saying no to this allows me to be so much better somewhere else. And so when you are looking at your business, when you are looking at your workload, when you are looking at your client base, I really encourage you to understand who is your client, what do they need from you, what do you want to give them, and qualify your clients not just based on money, because at the end of the day, the money is just a tool. The, mo the money is the thing that moves the needle. It moves the ball down the field. It gets you from point A to point B. It's never just about the money. It has to be about something more or what are we doing here? So I hope that this gets you thinking. I hope that you set some really exceptional standards, standards that you can live with, that you're incredibly comfortable with, and that you actually enjoy disgusting because those standards are what is going to define your business and they're what's gonna set you up for success. So once again, my friends, thank you for 5,000 subscribers. If you find this video and we're at 6,000 or 7,000 or 20,000, um, just know that I'm, I'm so grateful that you were a part of the journey and a part of the process. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna talk about next time? Maybe we'll talk about when I have taken the wrong client and what's happened then. So stay tuned, I'll see you next week and we'll talk about something amazing. Thanks.